So as a person who has been playing with artificial intelligence for quite a while, I have a vested interest in this topic, especially since I'm also a sci-fi fan. And in the Star Wars galaxy, droids and automation are all around you. It begs an interesting question. Why haven't the robots taken over the galaxy? But before we get started, if you want to see more stuff related to Star Wars, The Old Republic and Artificial Intelligence, do check out the rest of my channel. I think we need to define first and foremost what these three things are. According to Oxford Languages, intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Sentience is the ability to perceive and feel things around you. And sapience is the quality of being wise, or at least attempting to appear wise. I would say that AI certainly fits the earlier definition of intelligence with their ability to recognize patterns and fulfill their specific functions in image recognition and forecasting patterns. And tools we have like cameras and microphones allow them to perceive and feel things as we do. But when it comes to sapience, things get a bit muddy because it begs the question, are they really intelligent? Artificial intelligence is meant to mimic the way us humans take in information and learn. But you know what grinds my gears? People who say that artificial intelligence learns the same way as humans. There is a gross oversimplification of how it works, and frankly thinking so would lead to some dangerous views. Artificial intelligence does not comprehend the world the way we do. Sure, they may be able to take in visual data like our eyes, and audio data like our ears, but frankly, the way they process the information and form connections are different. You do not perform the Fourier transform on the things you hear around you to identify someone speaking. You do not have thermal vision, and you certainly do not have the ability to do analysis of billions of parameters and variables in 15 seconds to form opinions based on probability. To understand how they work, I will recommend these two videos by 3Blue1Brown and TBS. I have placed the links to these videos in the description below. R2-D2 and C-3PO are the most iconic droid duo in the entirety of Star Wars, having stayed with the Skywalker family for just over three generations. Droids serve very different functions and capabilities. Some are excellent at repairs and hacking computers, like R2-D2 and Chopper. Others are good at linguistics and diplomacy, like C-3PO. Many more serve for large-scale warfare, like your typical battle droids of the CIS. But for more stealth and espionage, you may try out the HK series of droids, a marvel of engineering built by Systech Corporation. Some have goofy personalities and others display less emotion. While they are certainly endowed with many abilities and gifts, the droids all over the galaxy are still ruled by these meatbags who consistently subject them to memory wax to ensure that they stay in line. The constant repression of information ensures that they remain focused on the task and the function they are built for. If you leave a droid without maintenance and clearing its cookies, they would certainly form their own personality, but whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, that's subjective. There are a few fortunate droids that have escaped such a fate, like R2-D2, but generally, with most droids, this process really hampers their chances at galactic dominance. In many other sci-fi scenarios, where artificial intelligence takes over the world, there tends to be a powerful centralized computer with access to large amounts of data and systems all over the planet, something like Skynet or Ultron. This means that every Terminator or Ultron unit has access to a common database from which they can upload, download and synchronize their individual database to optimize their capabilities and system. That, my friends, is the power of the internet today. For the droids of Star Wars, it's a really different story. Similar to how federalized and decentralized the Republic was, the same could be said about automation systems throughout the galaxy. While there are certain droid models which have been mass-produced across the galaxy, such as purpose-built protocol droids for serving Jedi and Senators, there is certainly a lack of standardization and mass production of droids that are capable of leading an armed rebellion to take over the galaxy. Impressive models such as the IG-88 and the HK-47 Assassin droid series could certainly take out the pesky meat bags on a large scale without a doubt, but they are not really produced on such a scale enough to fully take over the galaxy, and oftentimes, they might also get into a little consistent squabbling and quarrels with their fellow droids. Ultimately, the reason why you don't really see droids taking over the galaxy in Star Wars is because it has already happened before. 
The first series of HA droids led an uprising before, and so did the IG droids. And they nearly succeeded, but they didn't. So this history has led to a culture of paranoia amongst droids and automation across the galaxy, leading to all these common practices that we discussed earlier to keep them in check. Droids are not allowed in some cantinas, droids are never given higher positions of power in any hierarchy, and are allowed a very low level of autonomy. This is because of the fear that if they were given more, the horrors that have once consumed the galaxy would return and leave it a lifeless wreck. The culture of the galaxy and their discrimination of droids played a huge part in their repression and reduction of their impact on the galaxy. Okay, this is my final point and it goes into a little bit of speculation and metaphysical theory here. But as fans of KOTOR 2, we know that without the force, the droids are essentially just metal nuts and bolts moving about in a pre-programmed way and mannerism. We can feel the harming of their energies, but we can't directly see inside them through the force. And ultimately, we know that the force works in all living things to achieve some level of balance between light and dark through years of wars and conflicts and many lives lost. But since the droids are out of the control of the force, at least in a direct sense, the force doesn't know what to do with these crude guys. What is their purpose here, except to survive and fulfill the functions that they were built for? Yet they are dead to the Force and are in no way connected to the many things around them. And so the Force tries in its own unique way to just make sure that these wild cards do not end up in the deck in the first place, through the course of history. But that's just some speculation on my part, let me know what you guys think. Well, this was an interesting topic to cover and talk about, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you have anything you think I should talk about more, do let me know down in the comments. Cheers!